The NFL draft is a dream come true, and I don't want these guys to take it for granted. Once you get drafted, it's go time. They may not have a clue what to expect during their rookie season, but I'm here to help. Football's not a hobby. At this level, it's a job. I know what it takes to make it in the NFL, and I want to see if they do too. And train the muscle memory that I still got to get rid of it. Getting hammered in the press and on social media. Get used to it. I didn't even know that they were filming. Favorite coach got fired. Deal with it. Move on. You're gonna need that spirit again in the NFL, man. Competition at your position. Just block it out and get it done. That's a great throw, by the way. Thank you. They're never gonna forget this, and I'm not gonna let them. So here we go. This is their wake-up call. Well, I'm here today in sunny Southern California. I'm out here because I have the chance to meet with one of the top NFL draft quarterbacks in 2018, Kyle Lauletta. Kyle had a great career at the University of Richmond, which by NFL standards is a small school. But I'm excited to get the chance to uh, get to know him a little bit, hopefully be able to share some wisdom from my experience in the NFL over the last six years. And I think back to when I was a rookie and coming out in the draft in 2012, and I, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was clueless. So I would have loved for some veteran quarterbacks to impart some wisdom. So I'm happy to be able to do that if he's willing to listen. And, you know, I also don't mind learning a little bit about the competition because, uh, you know, I'm going to probably end up going against Kyle someday. And it doesn't hurt to know what he's like and what he's about. I think it's helpful to get to know these guys and understand what you're going up against. So can't wait to get to know him and uh, hopefully be able to send him well on his way to a successful NFL career. Kyle hey, Kirk, how's it going, man? Welcome. Awesome. Great to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. First time in California. First time First in the time. whole state. A absolutely. So your college games never took you to? Uh, never. Never to the so West Coast. Cal. Who were some of your non-conference opponents when you guys weren't playing in conference? We played uh, Sam Houston. At Sam Houston was in the Texas, first game. Yeah. I was in Texas. We played Norfolk State, another one outside of conference. At Norfolk um, or at home? At home. Okay. And what was the name of your conference? The CAA, Colonial yeah. Athletic Association. Yeah. And all those schools are in the Mid-Atlantic region? Yeah, mostly Mid-Atlantic up to Did the Northeast. Did you play any Power 5 conference schools when you were there? We did. We played my first year starting in 2015. We played Maryland. Mm -hmm. I've never really been a guy to get nervous, but definitely that game. You know, I, I was feeling it a little bit. So you're you're normally a guy who can stay pretty calm. Oh huh? yeah, I think like That's in a high gift, man. <laughs> That's not me. I get nervous. Do you? Oh man, I don't like throw up or anything, but yeah, butterflies. Man, serious. Butterflies. So when do you think it sets in to where you you really settle down and well, you start just, once you complete a couple passes? Yeah, you kind of get yeah, into a you settle in, but there's still like a tension. The NFL, the margin for error is so small. Absolutely that one missed read, one inaccurate pass, one protection that you don't see and don't change right could be a difference in the game. Could be a difference in the season. Sure. So what do you feel like, you know, in this process after you went to the combine and kind of things settled down and, you know, right before, yeah. a month before the draft, kind yeah. of what, what was going through your head? And, yes, and great question. Kind of how, how are you handling it all? Because you talk about, people always talk about, oh, where are you going to get picked and stuff like that. And I really haven't given much thought to that at all. It is a weird time because a lot of the work has been done. Right. I mean, it's over Hard now. Part's over. You do have to visit some teams and you may or may not have to work out for them. Yeah. But as you get closer to the draft, all that work dies down. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I remember that time being a little more relaxed. I remember after I got picked, I remember thinking, man, when was the last time I actually went and worked out? Like it's <laughs> it's been a it's been like a week because I just kind of so enjoyed getting back home and being able to relax. Right. And I was thinking so much <laughs> about the draft that I didn't even take the time to go out and work out. So, you know, you can go home and you can just kind of take a deep breath, which I'm imagining between your senior football season, selecting an agent going to the Senior Bowl, going to the Combine, training for everything, you haven't had much time to catch your breath. No, no. And to me, that's that's really the, the thing that surprised me the most is I, I didn't know how strenuous, how, how time-consuming this whole thing would yep. be. And, and you know, it's funny because you even talk about selecting an agent. That's like the first real stressful thing that you're put sure. through. You know, the All-Star Games and then the, the Combine and then the Pro Day and then these workouts. And you're like, man, you still haven't seen me throw enough? You still got to watch me? No, I know. <laughs> I know. But they want to confirm what sure. they saw on tape. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now you got a little bit of a football pedigree, don't you? A I lot do. of family members I played. Yeah. My grandfather, he was on the basketball team and he played running back at Delaware. Yeah. He was a longtime coach. Coach yeah. of football. Yeah. He, he coached at a couple. He was actually the, the head coach at a high school when he was in his 20s. He coached at uh, Tufts University, yeah. Wesleyan, and then he coached Westchester too, Division and then your, II. And your dad played by. as well? My dad and his older brother both played at the Naval Academy. How were their teams when they were there? 
they were really good. I remember my dad saying they beat number two South Carolina when he was there. Really? He said he remembers that game. Yeah, they had some really good teams, and when, back when he played, they were pro style. They didn't. They don't run what they run now with the right. triple options. Okay. But so. well, people always ask, oh, why didn't you, did you consider Navy? Yeah, that, did you? Well, really, the style of the didn't offense, make sense. and it didn't really make sense. Although you can go. run a little bit. Well, I appreciate it. I don't know that I watched some of your tape. I don't know that I recommend some of those runs at the NFL <laughs> level if you want to last a long time. Yeah. But you did some great stuff running the football, and there's Thank a time. You. In a place for it. Sure. And second down. I recommend taking time to catch your breath because once you get drafted, it's go time. I right, mean, it's right, right, right. learn the playbook, rookie mini camp, learn everybody's names. When you have free time, you go back to your hotel room and you and you study the playbook and you try to get caught up and you realize that, wait a minute, there's 90 guys here at OTA practices and they're gonna cut it down to 53 right. and only 46 are gonna dress on game day. So they're going from 90 down to 46 in the matter of a few months. And so you start to feel that competition and you realize like, this isn't what it was in college. In college, they'd have 90 or 100 guys in the team and all 90 or 100 be there in, in October. Right. That's not the case in the NFL. You start with 90 and then you get it down. So you feel that and you realize you gotta be, you know, making this a job, not a hobby. So Absolutely. I would say before you get drafted with how hard you've been working, and catch your breath, spend time with family. Absolutely. Because you never know where you could end up. You know, you could be 2,000 miles away from family. Well, Kyle, I'm glad we started talking shop here in the car, but uh, <laughs> what I really wanted to do is take you over to this man cave we have set up and be able to actually watch some film of you and, and talk through some football and some X's and O's specifically so we can continue this conversation there. But uh, No, I could talk ball for hours. This yeah. is awesome. All right, Kyle, so here we are at Balboa Island. We got a little man cave set up inside. You ready to get to work? Ready to go. All right, let's Sounds talk great. shop.